I am Carl Reiner, and I'm sick of people sitting at home and flipping around their channels. International Guinness. First, this important word. With special guest stars. A salute to mothers. I didn't know anything about that. But look how fast. <laughs> Las Vegas. With their little remote control. See, I've seen the show that we're about to see now, and I know the work that went into it, and I know how brilliant it is, and it would make me sick if you flipped those channels while the show was on. So I'm going to have to ask you to please give me your remote controls. I'm going to have to ask you to confiscate them. Please, may I have your remote controls? I don't believe that this is all of them. So those of you who are holding out, we're going to render them useless. They won't work, so don't try it. Well, you're in for a treat. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jerry Seinfeld. Look at this. Look at your lives. This is your life. You're right in the middle of it right now. You're not home, that's about it. So far, that's all you've accomplished. But that's a pretty big thing, isn't it? To be not home, except for those of you out there on TV, you haven't even accomplished that. You just paid your cable bill, that's all you accomplished. There's not much I can do about that. And I think that's the most important thing about these shows. You go to a show, you're just not home. That's it. You want to go out. Isn't that the feeling? How many times do you feel that? You feel that, you know that, I got to get out, right? I got to get out. And you go out, you stand around somewhere for a little while, and you go, I got to be getting back. <laughs> I've been out. I've got to get back. I've got to go to sleep. I've got to get up. I've got to go out again tomorrow. <laughs> that is the feeling of life. You've got to go. All the time. You get to your job, what is your first thought? I want to get home. <laughs> but you get home, you feel cooped up, you got to get out. You're out of sight, you got to get back wherever you are, you've got to get the hell out of there. You got to go all your life, got to go. How many times a week do you say to people, got to go, I got to go, you got to go, let's go. Would you let me go? I've got to go. We don't even ask each other where. Can you say, got to go, go ahead, okay, I don't care. What happened to that guy? I don't know, we had to go. He, uh, he said that he had to go. He's going to go to the movies tonight. I'm sure many of you considered that option. Could have gone away, especially select the theater. You could have gone to a theater near you. <laughs> I don't even know how these theaters know where I am. <laughs> I'm getting tired of getting ripped off on the candy, aren't you? You know we're getting killed on that candy, especially when you see it in the glass case, the jewelry case for candy. <laughs> I go up to the guy. I'd like to see something in a milk dud if I could. <laughs> Sometimes the guy will take out one milk dud, put it on the black velvet display panel. Boy, that's a beauty, honey. What do you think? That's a two-carat dud. Take a look at that. And who is buying that horse bucket size of popcorn? I don't need that much roofing insulation. You know, it comes with ear hooks. You can put it on, wear it like a feed bag if you want. Just... Come on, let's go. Hello, I'm Jerry Seinfeld. How do comedians come up with material? For years, comedians have jealously guarded the secret of where material comes from. It's been confidential until now. The fact is, almost everything is funny. You just have to have a way of looking at it. These are comedy x-ray specs. They're ready now designed so that for the first time in history, the general public will be exposed to the way comedians view our world. For the next hour, it will be as if you, the viewer, have stolen a comedian's brain. How can this be? I'll demonstrate. Let's just say we put the comedy x-ray specs right on the lens of the camera. 
See that? Funny, huh? I think that's enough. I said that's enough. I'm glad you all enjoyed that. Now, can we get on with this? I'm from Long Island. That's where I grew up. Thank you. Thank you. That is the correct amount of applause. I uh, grew up there. My folks just moved to Florida this past year. They didn't want to move to Florida, but they're in their 60s, and that's the law. <laughs> they have those leisure police golf carts that pull up in front of your house now all around the country. All right, Pop, get the golf clubs. Get in the back. Let's go. Just drop the snow shovel right there, Pop. I don't want any trouble. Moms, I love my mom. Let me just say that. But she's into things, which is great. She's into things. She's into wallpaper. She thinks wallpaper is absolutely riveting. She, every time I see her, she pulls a little swatch out of her pocketbook. What do you think about the whole house and this? Every room, floor, ceiling, this pattern, what do you think? Here, wait, I'll put it up against the wall. Maybe you can imagine it better. Now, what do you think? Do you think, do you like this or maybe, or this one better? This one's better. I thought this one was better. Whatever you think, mom, whatever you think. But I try and get involved. I want to, you know, I want to be involved. I go to the wallpaper store. I try and, you know, talk with the salesman or something there. And what is the difference, say, between the semi-gloss paint and throwing myself off a building? What would be the difference there? <laughs> Do you realize how dull you are to talk with? Has anyone ever told you that? <laughs> and what happens is I walk around the wallpaper store, and, my, and you know when you get bored, your feet just kind of start to drag, and you just... Mom, can we get out of here already, please? Can we go? They don't have it. They don't. Mom, come on, let's go. They don't have them. The guy talked to the other guy. They don't. No, no, I don't think they're in the back. I don't even think they have a back here. Let's just get out of here, all right? Just... Really, I'm fading, Mom. Please, just give me, help me. <laughs> Of course, when you're a little kid and you get bored, you can't support your body weight at all. You have to really just lie down wherever you are. <laughs> when you're five and you get into one of these situations, just lie down and wait it out. That's what I would always do. <laughs> your parents, they take you to the bank. That was the classic one. My parents take me to the bank. They turn around from the teller and I was just flat out on the floor. Just can't make it, Mom. And they get so upset. Would you get up off the floor, please? Get up. I can't get up, Mom. It's too dull in here. You better get me one of my comic books. I'm in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Why do people come to the bank, Mom? It's so dull in here. And then she always tries to pick you up with that one arm, but you just keep spinning around. Would you get up now? But this is ridiculous. You aren't embarrassing me. Do you realize that? I wish I could help you, Mom. I really do. It's just too dull. I really feel that that's one of the big powers of adulthood, is the ability to be totally bored and remain standing. I think that's why they can set up the DMV that way. It's just... <laughs> the only exciting thing I ever remember when my parents would drag me along in these little errand things is when they would, sometimes in front of a store, they would have like the two red metal horses. Do you remember those? And I would get so excited because that was something for kids. Mom, they got them here, Mom. <laughs> Mom, come back. They got them right here. A dime. One dime. That's all I need. Just... But I can't remember. What I can't remember is what is the fun of those rides? What was the fun? To vibrate for a minute and a half? Is that it? Just, just sit on there and go... You get off, I feel a thousand percent better, Mom. Thank you very much. I feel totally refreshed and revitalized. In fact, I'm ready for the wallpaper store now. You want to go back there? Lamps, furniture, I'm into it. Let's roll. Because that's what happens with parents. What happens, actually, is that the roles begin to reverse with you and your parents. You know that moment? I don't know when it happens. There's just that moment that all of a sudden, you're in the mall, and you're in charge, and they wander all around the store like little ducklings. <laughs> you know that moment? All of a sudden, you're running around. Mom, we lost Dad. He's down by the... Uh tools. Dad, Mom is going to be over there. Do you want her to get it together, or should we... Do you want to meet later? And they're just quack, 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 quack. Want to cross the street? The light is changing. Dad, stay up with Mom. The light is changing. Go ahead, Mom. I'll get Dad. Dad, go ahead. The light... They have ice cream over there, too. Let's keep it moving. Keep it moving. Come on. I 
I personally do not like family gatherings. I'm not too good at it. I don't like being there. You know what they're gonna say? It doesn't matter what the subject of conversation is, it always ends on the same line. Doesn't matter whether it's controversial, mundane. One of them always kind of perks up and goes, well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> you just saw some of my material. Now let's try it with the specs and I'll show you why it seemed funny to me in the first place. Two hours late getting here, Lou. Unbelievable. Whose fault is that? Why do we have to get here late every year? Well, yeah, you sure you're uh, betting oh, yes. here. You know, there's pudding in this. Well, that's good uh -huh. for you. How do they do that? Delicious. Well, it's, it's in the mix. Why uh -huh. can't you get the directions for she invites us every year? Oh. I've never had one meal here. I always come in time for dessert. One. And it's scientific, right? That's good. I never seem to enjoy these family gatherings. I didn't care either. I think I was invisible to them. You don't write anything down. Oh, I really shouldn't have this. What time, supper? Where do you put it? I can't be around food. You don't. I play Candyland. I put on five. You know, I believe I'm losing weight. I'm swimming in. That's the way the world is. You can't win. No, you can't. What do you think? What time, supper? Normally, I could barely take these scenes. But I didn't mind today. The tickets to my all-time favorite TV show had finally arrived. The Howdy Doody Show. I didn't care what they babbled. I was going to the peanut gallery. A dream come true. $20,000 of plastic surgery. They say I'm still not done yet. I've always felt that it takes time. What are you going to do? It's your health. Time will tell. Honey, hand me uh. my cigarettes. <coughs> no, not the Hey, I heard Murray's the in the hospital. You heard anything? I don't like him. Very bad. He should drop dead. Oh? You should drop Good dead. Good book says they should all drop time dead. for all seasons. Time? Who's got the time? I wish I had <clears> the time. Now, it says here that they're taking howdy duty off there. Off the air? They're taking Howdy Doody off the air. I'm not surprised. What's he looks very air? bad. I don't even know what off the air Come is. here, you goofy kid. Your undies all in a bundle over a puppet. Come over here now. Now you listen to your Uncle Lou, all right? I was in the same situation myself the other day. I on the phone to one of my main suppliers, Jack Kramel from American Tension Envelopes. The client right there in my office. This has nothing to do with my problem. Lost. You know what I did? <laughs> I lied. I always lie. Lied right in his face. Bald face lie right in front of the client. It didn't bother me. I always lie. See, that's how I get started in business. I could be lying to you right now. Now, you wouldn't know you're just a kid. <laughs> it was different when I was a young man. We had to be men at that time anyway. I had to walk to school. It was uphill both ways. It's like an Escher print. Figure that out. But I'll tell you one thing. So, hey, 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 wait a minute, hey. Why don't you tell him you were there? I would. Huh? Yeah, tell him I'm Buffalo Bob. I'll vouch for you. Hey, I'm a lot older than you are. And I don't know if I ever told the truth once. <laughs> well, anyway. Evelyn, if we're going to beat the traffic, oh, yeah. we should be moving. We should go. Thanks for the help. Who cares what time it is? Without Howdy Doody, my life is over. Oh, I enjoy these parties, but then I'm a party person. Who says that? My friends, family, well, I'll tell you one thing, though. Yeah? I love what she's done with the place, huh? Oh, it's beautiful. Hey, there's a whole other room in there. There's a guy in there just like me. <laughs> and he looks very bad. Sure. So that's why I never liked family gatherings, because <laughs> that's why. All of that serves to explain why. I don't know. I had a lot of good toys when I was a kid, but the best toy was always something you can get on your own, like a cardboard box. If you're five years old, you get one of those big boxes comes in from a refrigerator. When you're five, that's the closest you're going to come to having your own apartment. <laughs> like, you crawl in, you cut a little hole for the window. Mom, Dad, you must come over sometime, really. I'm so convenient to where you live. It's the Frigidaire building, apartment one. The entrance is right around the front. <laughs> I played with toys. Had a yo-yo, which was interesting. I don't know if you know. The yo-yo was originally a weapon uh, invented in the Philippines. I'm not making that up. They really did. I don't know how they used it as a weapon. I think that's kind of interesting, though, that nations warring with yo-yos. I don't know how they accomplished that. <laughs> Planes flying low over enemy villages. They lean out the door. I think I got the chief. <laughs> Enemy tribes on the ground, you know, that really hurt. <laughs> Why are they doing this? Yo-yo crime in the city. All right, buddy, up against the wall. I got a Dunkin' Butterfly in my pocket. <laughs> One false move, I rock the baby right here. <laughs> Don't make me go around the world. <laughs> Speaking of armies, the Swiss have an interesting army. 500 years without a war. Pretty impressive, also pretty lucky for them. 
You ever see that little Swiss Army knife they have to fight with? <laughs> Not much of a weapon there. Corkscrews, bottle openers. Come on, buddy, let's go. <laughs> you get past me, the guy in back of me, he's got a spoon. <laughs> back off, pal, I got the toe clippers right here. <laughs> I'll clip that pinky toe down to nothing. <laughs> I hope you're starting to see what a powerful tool these can be. They can also adjust the world a little more to your personal taste. Let's take one more look at that living room and see how much fun it could have been if the atmosphere had been a little looser. Rack him up, Dad! Bad kid. Him in his fantasy living room. Come on, Dad! You give it a try. I just loaded it up with fresh clocks. All right. Try it with this. Hey, did you get this hammer from my toolbox? Oh, yeah. And I'm going to put it back wherever I want. I've got no problem with that. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, we used to play outside. Yeah, yeah, just go already. All right. <laughs> You two, you know, that's my favorite piece. Now that's enough playing around, you guys. Go wash your hands. The chocolate's almost ready for dinner. Oh, and Jerry, please bring your frog to the table. Okay, okay. Boy, what a pain. Sure glad I don't have school this year. Come on, Dad. Let's go wash up. I love that kid. <laughs> Fathers have, you know, very specific things that they like to do. And one of their favorite things, I think, is to move heavy furniture. You know, they pretend that they hate this when they get the job. When they hear that something very heavy has to be moved, they pretend, oh, but they love it. They do love it because they're in charge of this whole tremendously complex thing. The fathers love to say, come on, give me a hand with this. You want to give me a hand with something very, very heavy? Give me a hand with this. My father never moves a sofa unless he's got a cigarette in his mouth burned down or a quarter of an inch long. The smoke goes right in the eye. I don't know why. This is how he likes to move things. Have you got your in there? I can't see anything. Because you want your eyes blinking and tearing when you're going backwards down a staircase holding a couch. That's the easy way to do it, isn't it? That's his other big advice to me, easy. I don't know what the hell that means. Every time we lift up something heavy, he goes, easy now, take it easy, easy, easy. It's not easy, it's very difficult, okay? You want easy, leave it here in the hallway. That's easy. If we're gonna move it, it's very difficult. <laughs> Why don't you say what you mean when you pick it up? Just go, difficult, difficult, it's very difficult. This is very difficult. This really hurts and it's difficult. And I don't like doing this. It's impossible, put it down, impossible, impossible, impossible. Yeah. You can't move that. <laughs> That other part is, that gets me is the head fake when you've got the sofa in the air. They wait until you've got it up. Then they explain the complex maneuver up the stair and around through the doorway, right? It's like, all right, angle it up now. Bring it back. The way you got it, it's never going to go. It's got to come back and then over and then around and then bring it up. Angle it in, corkscrew, then up and then back on an opposite obtuse angle, more back to the other way. Put it down now. Wait a minute. I'm not getting enough smoke in the eye. Hold it. No. No, the cigarette is out. I'm losing smoke here. Let me go start up the car. I'll stare into the exhaust pipe for about 30 minutes. I want to get that eyeball like a radish. That's what I like. I like to be completely blind and move heavy furniture. That's what I really, really like. Furniture? What else do dads like? They like, uh, they like car trunks. You ever try and help your father pack the trunk? Dad, where does this go? Just set it down right there. It goes in some special way that only I understand. <laughs> No one could help him. Aliens could come from other galaxies to help him. He would go, would you all just let me do this, please? I know what I'm doing here. Dad, they're from another galaxy. I think they know how to travel. Not with your mother, they don't. Just get the rest of the stuff and let me handle it here. The thermostat is another big dad area. I don't think I touched the thermostat till I was about 28 years old, actually. He had me so freaked out about it. You know, just, don't touch it, don't touch it. What the hell is it? 
I was in a hotel room when I finally got up the guts to just move it a little bit. <laughs> the whole night I was afraid he was gonna burst in the door. Who touched the thermostat in here? <laughs> you know, I set it there for a reason. <laughs> what is the secret reason of the thermostat? I waited my whole life to find out. Finally, one day he did. He sat me down. He told me this whole story, the sperm, the egg, intercourse. I said, Dad, who cares? Get to the part where the thermostat comes in. <laughs> Fathers. Nobody seems to know what to do with these guys. They wander around the house. Nobody really knows how to operate them. Wouldn't it be great if there was some sort of a guide? Yeah, a guide to the family dad. Good morning, class. Morning, All right, continuing now with the guide to the family dad, you are responsible for these new dad terms. They go in your dad term to kid meaning glossary. Your mother and I means? Your mother. I have a little job for you. This will take hours of your valuable time. You have to be careful with these. You will have a lot of fun with these. I'm going to watch a little TV. I'm going to fall asleep in a chair. I'm going to look at the paper. I'm going to fall asleep in a chair. All right. Now, one of the most important things to know about dad ownership is dads feel they know enough about the world to start their own civilization. That's what the family is to them. The fathers think, the hell with life. I can invent my own people, my own rules for fashion, my own health and diet. Have you ever had your father stick a big jar of high-test, super-cheap horseradish under your nose? No! And then he says, this cleans the system out right down the line. They believe in this Roto-Rooter. Probably the trickiest part of dad ownership is gift-giving. Does anyone have any suggestions? Yes. How about one of those executive decision-makers, like the eight ball? Fine. And you know what you'll get for your birthday? Robitussin. Someone else. Yes. Monogram shirt? Honey, I know it's his shirt. He knows it's his shirt. Who else needs to know whose shirt it is? Someone else. Oh, oh, oh! Yes? I know. How about a tie? Out. But... Get out. I don't believe I stand up here and talk till I'm blue in the face, and I have to deal... You belong in intro to Dad's. That's room 101 down the hall. I'll be back. Oh, I see we got the family trip simulator in today. I believe Tommy Wyman practiced on it earlier. If you'd like to give us a little demonstration, Tommy. All right, now, first thing, get that seatbelt off. You can't possibly annoy your sister strapped in like that. You're in heavy traffic on a Sunday afternoon. It's hot. You're antsy. You're moving around. Oh, nice move to the floor of the car. And that teasing's paying off. Your sister's starting to cry. That means good point. He's looking in the rearview mirror. Uh-oh. Nice move with the comic books. Did you see that? He protected himself with the book. You're almost in the bonus round. If you can just move the radio off his favorite station. Uh-oh, he's had it with you, crazy kids. He's pulling over. He'll have both hands free in five seconds. Get out of the car. You're in serious trouble. Get out of the car. Nice going. Good scores on agility and aggravation. But saving this slinky was risky and could have jeopardized the entire mission. I'm sorry to have to be so rough on you kids, but remember, a dad is not just a job, it's an adventure. Dad salute. Ugh. Dismissed. Those are very special kids. Pets. Dogs are uh, pets. Dogs are the pets that really... Dogs want to be people. Do you ever feel that from your dog? You walk by him and he's just sitting there in the living room with that look on his face like he's thinking, I could do that. <laughs> he's not that good. <laughs> look, he tripped on the carpet edge over there. And they get up there in the front seat of the car. This is, of course, I think the ultimate dog experience. To ride in the front seat of the car with a human being. Did you ever take your dog out like that? Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, you've got nothing to do. He's generally free. <laughs> He's not going to go, I didn't have the bone scheduled for today. I, uh, I could push it into Monday, but that kind of backs me up with the rawhide chew toys. But I can't really, no. I'm just all jammed up here. So they get up in the front seat of the car. I think the first thing that they notice is that your head and his head are the same height. And he thinks, hey, maybe no one will know I'm a dog. 
<laughs> just those two heads going down the street. <laughs> he watches the road. What is he looking at? Why is he watching the road? Are you going to turn there? I would turn there. <laughs> he sees his doggy friends. Don't bark at me now. I'm with people. Don't ever bark at me when I'm with people. <laughs> and they try. They want so badly to fit in, you know. So they try to accommodate their body to the car seat. You know, they stand up, they sit down, they try this position, you know, or they stand up. Whichever way you turn, he's not ready. No, he's not ready for any kind of a turn. You crank that wheel, he drops right out of sight. He's just, he's gone. He's just gone. He's just, hey, ho, hey. Hey, hey, what happened? Take it easy over there. I can't get a grip. I've got no thumbs. Shake it out, pal. That's a paw, baby. Three circles. Some of them kind of start to get good at it, though. You know, they kind of get that leaning. Those front paws are trembling terribly. What is happening? But then you get hungry, you know, and then, then you, you know, you just kill it for him. Because you get hungry, you stop in some place, you get a hamburger and a drive through or something. This just blows his mind. Instant food, his life's goal. He looks over at you like, how did you get that? That's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Dogs can't get one. They, they can't get anything. They have no money. Dogs are broke their entire lives. And you know why they have no money? No pockets. They have no pockets. They see change on the street. There is nothing they can do about it. Remember, the X-ray specs are fully automatic. Do not attempt to adjust your attitude towards more sympathetic or more cynical. We will control why something is funny. Dogs do want to be people, and they think they're going to be. They all have their little human accessories. They've all been taught human behaviors. Sit, shake. Why does he have to learn to shake? He's not closing any big business deals. All right. I'm going to go in the store. You wait here. Yeah. I'll be right back. Uh, yeah, yeah. The window. Don't forget the window. Air. Dogs need air. And open the window a little bit. Whew. This coat isn't Banlon, you know. I could do this. Wouldn't hurt my social life any. <laughs> Ooh. Great meal. I'm stuck. Kibble? So, uh, maybe you'd like to go for a walk later. Oh, by the way, these are for you. You know, you smell fantastic. Are you wearing perfume? No. No. I guess I just love that smell. So, have you tried the new gravy train? Oh, no, I'm still on cycle, too. I'm pretty active. Wow. Well, I try and keep in shape. Uh, mostly walking. Well. I chase my tail when I get the chance. Wow. Uh oh, here he comes. You miss me, fella? Yeah, like the mange. No biscuits. Boy, if I could run this fast, I'd be king of the dogs. You like the car, don't you, boy? Hey, Dukes, Bart, Muffin, it wasn't the van, I'm okay. I'll meet you in the yard. I like dogs, I do, but they're, they're, they're really not that bright either. I mean, let's examine the dog mind the way it works. First of all, every time you come home, he thinks it's amazing. He can't believe you've accomplished this again. You walk in the door, the joy of it almost kills him. He's back again, it's that guy. It's that guy that was here before. The same guy. You're that guy. <laughs> they have the whole little celebration dance that they do, you know. But if you go out for five minutes and you come back, he goes through the whole routine all over again. You're back again. I have no concept of time. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm not married. Just hanging out. Gets a round of applause, but it takes nothing to accomplish that, really. 
<laughs> I was engaged one time. Being engaged is a pretty tense situation. I don't know if you've ever been engaged. The word engaged itself is a pretty tense word. You're engaged. <laughs> it's like suddenly you're part of a gear, you know. Just... <laughs> Boy, and, uh, but I didn't get married, but that was, you know, being engaged. Being engaged is, you know what it's like to me? It's like being on the first part of the roller coaster where you're just going up. Tick, 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 tick. Boy, this looks pretty scary. Tick, tick, tick. And you got, get to the top, they give you the ring and the piece of cake, and you go, whoa! Friends are on the ground going, boy, look at him go. <laughs> Cut me another piece of cake. Here he comes again. <laughs> so I had to get out. I wanted to get out. I didn't want to be married. So what do you do? What do you do there? What do you do? You just say, no. Uh, I can't be there. In fact, that whole week is bad for me. I've got my fear of commitment classes that week. Uh, my I don't want to grow up training seminar is in there. I'm like, just... Relationships are tough. Did you ever ask someone about their relationship? They, they, they just, you just ask them about it. So how's it going with Judy? It's very tough. <laughs> well, even if it's going great, they always touch their face. That's what I notice with people. You know, you should ask them about their How's it going? It's going all right. Oh, it's good. <laughs> just... How long have you been going out? A little while. Just... <laughs> Tuesday night, middle of the week. Not too much cologne. We can tell what day of the week it is by the cologne content of the room. I'm wearing cologne right now, actually. I don't even know why. I don't even know what cologne is. Do you ever think about cologne? I mean, it's a pretty deceptive thing. I mean, am I hoping people will think I really smell like this? Or <laughs> that I sweat brute somehow or something? I got this whole gift set. I'm really just trying to use it up. I got cologne after shave, soap on a rope. That comes in handy. A lot of times I'm in the shower, I want to hang myself. <laughs> Who thought of that? Hey, people love soap, they love rope. Let's put them together, we can sell millions of these. <laughs> Why, because it rhymes? I don't need shaving cream on a wooden beam. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite is the underarm deodorant with the cologne smell. That is the ultimate step, right? You got the cologne, face and neck, but you feel you need the same smell shooting out from under the arms. <laughs> I think once the woman's got her face in your armpit, the seduction is pretty much over. I would say she likes you. <laughs> Women have their things. They have, what do they have? Their cologne, perfume, toilet water. There's another dynamite name for a product. <laughs> what the hell was going on at that meeting? <laughs> Why don't we name it after the water in the toilet? <laughs> that is the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. I think they'll like it. Then we can come out with a cesspool body splash. <laughs> yeah, men and women, we're different. The bathrooms are certainly different. Men's bathrooms, women's bathrooms. Women's bathrooms are kind of neat, actually. The public ones, there you have a door that says women on it. Women just keep coming out of it. <laughs> I like that right there. <laughs> men always say to me, where do you meet women? I say, there you go, there's a door. What could be clearer than that? Says women, they gotta be in there. <laughs> Men's room, on the other hand, is a pretty nauseating, disgusting place, and every man in there is a sickening, revolting human slime, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you don't wanna know anybody when you go in there. You don't even wanna use your hands. You operate everything with the feet toilets, faucets, handles. You become an orangutan. They ought to put ropes in there so you can swing in, pee, swing out. I think that would be fun. Women's bathrooms at home are a whole nother deal there. When they're working in that bathroom, don't attempt to get in there. No, it's like trying to get in to see the Wizard of Oz. You know, she's like, ignore the woman behind the bathroom door. Silence!
Sure have. He uh, had to go out. When are you going to be ready? Don't worry. Just keep playing with Cleopatra. She loves it. Okay. Come here, Cleopatra. And he's cool. We'll see about that, you little hot shot. Come on, let's go. I've only got one line. Who rang my bell? Uh, I'm Jerry. We're off to see the movies. I'm the boyfriend. The boyfriend? Yeah, I'm new. Oh, well, that's a date of a different color. Come on in. I'll announce you at once. Supermarket. Now, see, I like when I can go into a place like the supermarket as an adult and get what I want. And if I don't want something, I put it back wherever I am in the supermarket, too. Because I don't work for the supermarket. I don't care if the store manager's looking right at me. Yeah, those are my peaches on top of the Pennzoil. What about it? It's impulse not buying, my friend. Too many weird items in there. Too many. Tide detergent is improved. Have you seen this? They are still working on Tide. <laughs> that blows me away. They are still working on Tide. Somewhere, people are working. Laboratories, weeknights, weekends. <laughs> Hand me the file, Bill. Maybe if we sharpen the granules, they'll get into the dirt more. Now they show you how detergents get out blood stains on television. Pretty violent image there. I think if you got a t-shirt with blood stains all over it, maybe laundry isn't your biggest problem right now. <laughs> maybe you ought to get rid of the body before you do the wash. Oscar Mayer is expanding his little area. It's not little anymore, is it? Oscar Mayer is now a huge, monstrous place. That area, that whole section there, keeps getting bigger. And, it's, and for him, it's not easy to come up with new products. You realize for Oscar Mayer to come up with a new product, he has to invent meat. <laughs> Folks, there is no olive loaf animal, as far as I know. <laughs> I've never seen a pig with little pimentos in the cell. <laughs> Some of them, I don't even think he knows what he came up with. They give him those vague, you know, Oscar Mayer names like luncheon meat. <laughs> we grabbed him, we threw him in the package, we never got a real good look at him. Uh, we were in the woods. It happened fast. Uh, I had the ears. Frank had his legs. He was trying to get away. He was trying to wrestle him there, and then he slipped out. And... Well, all we know is it's some kind of meat. You should eat it around noon. <laughs> That's pretty much all we figured out. Or that other one, head cheese. Whoa! The guy who invented head cheese was hungry. <laughs> I think we know that. I've always felt the words head and cheese should never be close together for any reason. It doesn't look like cheese. I mean, it can't be cheese. It's got to be some kind of meat. But they call it head cheese, I guess, because even Oscar Mayer knows nobody's going to buy head meat. I don't care what your background is, you will steer clear of the head meat. You'll get grape nuts or something. And nobody really knows what the hell that is either. You open the box, no grapes, no nuts. What's the story there? Everyone wants to know, well, what's in this? That's the big thing in the supermarkets, ingredients. You see people in reading ingredients. What's in it? What's in it? You ever see may contain one or more of the following? 
may contain, what is that, additive roulette. <laughs> what if it's important to you? What if you have diabetes? Does it have sugar? Maybe. <laughs> We're not saying. <laughs> Food as an adult, I think, is a great thing because you just pick whatever you want. You know, when you're a little kid, when you're in the supermarket, it's humiliating. Remember, you have to beg for food in public from your own family. It was so horrible. Mom, please, can I have these? I have the chocolate on the inside. I'll eat them. I promise I will. Okay, I'll put it back. All right, I'm putting it back. I'm putting it back now. How about these? It's strawberry. It's a new flavor. All right, forget it. How about these? I won't even bother. I'll just touch these. Yeah, it was tough to crack the cookie aisle most days, but my kitty senses were tingling. The cereal aisle was right around the corner, and little did my mom know they were just as sweet. If that shopping cart had a seatbelt, I'd have worn it because, friends, we were about to enter that precarious palace of the pup. That fare thee well fortress of flakes, that sanctuary of sweetness, sugar, trisodium mononitrate, the cereal aisle. Mom, can I? The ultimate, to me, the ultimate kid cereal is that cookie crisp cereal. You ever see that one? Cookie crisp, isn't that the ultimate? How much sugar is in that? It's cookies. They say, well, just make it cookies. <laughs> this is your breakfast, a bowl of chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Why don't they just call this product the hell with everything? <laughs> Ice cream for lunch, cake for dinner, bacon and cigarettes in between, that's it. It's the cookie crisp total health plan. Oh. Excuse me. All right, keep watching. There's more. A box of cereal was a big deal. The equivalent of landing a job for an adult. My greatest kid dream was to someday actually get a job in that field. I wasn't picky. Plate design, crunch analysis, or maybe the editor-in-chief of Cereal World magazine. Well, then who is causing the contents to settle during shipping? Great Caesar's ghost. Hold on. Best to you each morning. Can you hold, please? Just a minute. Steve, how far are you from Battle Creek right now? Well, keep on this thing till you draw up some information. I don't care if you do have to impersonate C.W. Post. You get me the inside scoop, or you're going to find yourself counting proof of purchase seals. Make that two scoops. Hello. Hello. Ah, Jason Kirby. Yes. Yes, I got your portfolio on the new adult cereals. Uh -huh. Can I speak frankly with you? Kirby? Yeah. No one's interested in low sugar anymore. What do you have? It's a hula hoop. Huh? America's coming back to sugar like boomerangs in a headwind. Oh, yeah. Do you want to know what you're going to see in the next five years? Yeah. Pre sweetened, super sweetened, sweetened again, and free prizes the size of your head. What? What? That's what you'll see in this industry. Uh, you want to know what I had for breakfast this morning? Yeah. A heaping bowl of frosted maxi sweets and a pure cane chaser. I... And you know what? I feel great. You know. The room is spinning, my head is buzzing. I couldn't make a fist if my life depended on it. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Go ahead, Kirby, keep it up. You'll fiber your ass right out of this business. Maybe you want to meet me for lunch? Yeah. I'm having a heaping bowl of deviled hyper smacks. What? I'll be on the seventh floor in my log cabin syrup flotation tank. <laughs> Damn, that guy's a real new Japan. Doreen? Doreen? Would you fix me a glass of Cocoa Puff milk? But, sir, I realize it's only 2 o'clock, but I need something to calm my nerves. That guy really gets my undies in a bundle. My, you look very cereal today. Thank you, sir. Low sugar. What, did that man sleep through the Lucky Charms revolution? Look at what he sends me. 
60 Minutes news puff shaped like Mike Wallace and Morley Safer. What are these caustic little marshmallows, sir? Andy Rooney's. Nice resemblance, actually. Mm. Anything else coming today? Just these few. Quackies, the decoy duck cereal. What are they about? They come with a miniature Remington repeater rifle. You shoot the ducks, they sink into the milk, and you can eat them. The NRA is looking into it as a possible promotional gimmick. Hmm. And this prize cereal? Oh, yeah, there's a huge toy truck inside. And a little packet of cereal on the back. Oh, different. Did the Explodios come in today? Yes, sir. The lab just brought them up. B but they said definitely not to touch them until they get back from lunch. What? Sir, I mean their second breakfast break. Oh, that's ridiculous. Listen, sugar, the cereal hasn't been invented that I can't understand. I'm going to try a quick bowl. I got to run to that snack pack seminar anyway. But, sir, Explodios! Oh, now what could possibly happen? That certainly was a surprise inside, sir. You know, I kind of like it. Snap, crackle, kablooey. Laundry is, uh, let's take the broader subject of laundry first, all right? <laughs> to me, clothes spend most of their lives waiting, if you look at it. In the closet, in the hamper, in the drawer. The shirt's in your house right now going, he never picks me. <laughs> laundry day is their only exciting day, because the washing machine is the nightclub of clothes. It's dark, bubbles happening, they're all kind of dancing around in there. <laughs> shirt grabs the underwear, come on, babe, let's go. You come by, you open up the lid, they all go. <laughs> we were just soaking. Could you close that door, please? <laughs> There's always an article from someone else's laundry ends up in there by mistake. Hey, who's that? <laughs> I have never seen her before. Sometimes I take the clothes out, they're all twisted together. I don't even want to know what happened. Socks are the most amazing article. You do a big laundry, go to the dryer, take them out, count them up. One of them got out. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch took off on his own. <laughs> what the hell are his chances out there? One sock on the run, pulling himself along. Dun, da, dun, da, dun, da, dun. <laughs> Where does he get buttons sewn on his face? Join a puppet show. <laughs> what can he do? How many times do you walk down the street and see a dirty sock just lying there in the street? He only made it a couple of blocks. <laughs> he took that risk. <laughs> they do. They, they will take any risk. They hate their lives that much. They're in the shoes with stinky feet. They're in the drawer. They wait for the dryer. That's their one chance. The night before in the hamper, they go, tomorrow, the dryer. Are you with me? I'll go it alone. The dryer door swings open. The sock is always waiting up against the side wall. He hopes you don't see him, then he runs. <laughs> or he grabs onto your sweater, gives him a little head start. <laughs> That's how they get away. That's how I'm going to get away. Thank you very much again. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay. I was just over there. <laughs> Talk about fear of abandonment. <laughs> so you have any questions for me as long as we have this little time together just to have a laugh or sing a song? How do you like being on the David Letterman show? Oh, I love it. I love David Letterman and I love that show. The one thing I do not understand about talk shows is why talk show hosts never have any idea how much time is left in the segment. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> They're always going around, they're always looking off camera. Do we have time? We had a time? Do we need time? We had a time for this? Yeah. It's their own show. They have no idea what's happening. You never see Magnum P.I. go, should I strangle this guy? We're going to take a break. 
I'll punch him in the head, we'll take a break, we'll come back, I'll drive real fast in the car. How about that? Uh, what do I miss most about New York? I, I like uh, riding in cabs in New York. It is an amazing experience because you ride in these cars. These guys, they take unbelievable chances with your life. You're totally calm and relaxed in the backseat. He's flying around the road, you're just sitting there. It's all happening on television. <laughs> Boy, that looked dangerous. I wouldn't try that in my car. Never seen an old lady jump straight up like that. They really have some string at that age, still, don't they? <laughs> then you're five minutes late, you start rooting for the guy. You know, he's up on the sidewalk, you're going, this is a good move. <laughs> he killed the guy, we're on time. Or the dumbest thing of all I think you can think of in a New York cab is, well, the man knows what he's doing. I mean, he is driving a little fast, but he's a professional cab driver. He's got a cab driver's license. I can see it right there. I don't even know what it takes to get a cab driver's license. I think all you need is a face. <laughs> and a name with like eight consonants in a row. <laughs> you ever check out some of the letters in these names? The O with the line through it is my favorite. What planet is that from? I need a chart of the elements just to report the guy. Yes, officer, his name was Amal, and then the symbol for boron. No, it was not manganese. I had the periodic chart with me at the time. You've been a great audience. Thank you very much.